the content of today's message, I, I won't always be doing this, and I prayed about it, but I think it's important. Um, and you'll probably figure out pretty soon why I'm going down this road. It's dealing with setting dates for Christ's return or predicting dates for Jesus' return. And uh, this is something we need to talk about periodically, and, and it's very important for us to understand what the Bible says about this practice. Now, how many of you, let me just see your hands, how many of you have either known somebody or you've heard before of somebody in modern times who has felt that they found the date when Jesus would come or the date for the rapture? See your hands. Okay, this should be relevant then. It covers just about everybody, right? Now, uh, you can predict the weather today a little better than you used to be able to predict the weather. Because, you know, now we've got satellites up in the sky and we've got buoys out in the sea and you've got aviation reports that are coming in and the accuracy of predicting the weather is much better now than it ever has been. But I don't know if you've noticed that even now with all of the modern technology we have, they still sometimes get it wrong. And so they try and cover themselves by saying, rain tomorrow or snow tomorrow, 50%, 30%, 60%. It's like gambling, which means it's an educated guess. So when people start trying to predict the second coming of Jesus in light of everything that Jesus said about what we can know and what we can't know, it's very reckless. Now what leads to that? Oh, by the way, Ben Franklin said, people talk more about the weather than any other subject, and it's one subject they can do almost nothing about. <laughs> Isn't that right? Why do people want to know the exact day of Jesus coming? Well, if you could know, would you want to know? If you could know the day you were going to die, would you want to know? <laughs> Have you really thought about that? What if I told you that uh, it was 100 years from now? Wouldn't you like to know that? Wouldn't you make feel a little better knowing that? If it was going to be next week, would you want to know? Oh. <laughs> Are you all ready? You got your will all written? Everything's all ready? Some of you, the jury's out. I can tell you're thinking about it right now. <laughs> By the way, when we talk about knowing the day when Jesus is coming, we're kind of talking about like the end of the world for us anyway, aren't we? So some people want to know. There's a certain amount of insecurity that we feel about what the future holds. When is the day of the Lord? Or the day of the Lord for me, anyway. You know, They've got people out there that are financial planners that will help you plan for your financial future. And there are life coaches out there that will help you, coach you in your life. And there's life planners now. And I know some people that have gone to visit life planners. And this is probably a good thing. I think it's good for you to talk to a good financial advisor. And, and it's not bad maybe to have a counselor sit down and say, have you thought about, based on what God's will is, where you want to see yourself? It's good to have some kind of a broad plan and then be open to God's leading. Right? You know, I can tell you now that should I live long enough, I'm not going to keep up the pace I've got now forever. I'd like to scale back a little bit and spend more time teaching and writing and less time on airplanes. But the Lord might have a different plan. So, you know, you just, you want to be open to it. The Bible tells us about attitudes we should have about the second coming in the future. There was even issues, there were issues even back in the Bible times with folks that were unsettling everybody about predicting times. Turn with me, 2 Thessalonians. Paul in his letters to the Thessalonians, both 1st and 2nd, talks a lot about the second coming. 2 Thessalonians 2, and I'll start with verse 1. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now brethren, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, no mistaking who he's talking about, our Lord Jesus Christ coming again, and our gathering to him, being caught up to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. Don't be troubled or shaken too soon, is what he's saying. 
Well, you know, it seems like everything else we read in the Bible, it says, behold, I come quickly, it is soon, it's at the doors. And then yet Paul is saying, no, wait a second, you might be misunderstanding those statements. Don't be soon shaken in mind. Don't be troubled. Either by spirit. We had a vision. We had a dream. A ghost and spirit came and talked to us. Or by word or by letter as if from us. Some people say, I can prove it from the writings of Paul and the writings of the apostles. I've got the date calculated. So don't be troubled. Doesn't matter if they say they've had a dream. We had somebody come through our church a few years ago. I won't mention any names. Shook hands with me at the door. I was introduced. They went on their way. Then they developed a website and says, I've had this dream about the day when the Lord was coming back and I've met with, and this person listed, Mark Finley, Doug Batchelor, and different people, and as though we had affirmed this date. And I vaguely remember someone telling me they had a dream. And you know, usually when people tell me that, I politely nod and smile. I didn't know what they were talking about. And they began to circulate that somehow I was endorsing that this date that they had, of course, it's all come and gone. I don't know if it was for um, the, the second coming of the Lord or some events leading up to it, but nothing happened. And you just got to be real careful. You might have a dream. I might have a dream. Do we base our conclusions on dreams that we have? It's got to go along with what the Word of God says. Let no one deceive you by any means. The Bible warns there will be a lot of deception on this subject. For that day will not come unless there comes a falling away first and the man of sin is revealed. Has that happened yet? Not to the world. And the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is worshipped so that he sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. You know, back to family radio and Harold Camping, I had a fleeting thought just the way the mind mind works. I'd like to put an ad in the paper in San Francisco or Oakland where they're based and say Amazing Facts will offer you $100,000 for family radio networks. You've got a great station network all over the world. You can use it any way you want, but if Jesus doesn't come by the 1st of June, you sign it all over to Amazing Facts. Amen. And my reasoning would be that if you're right, you deserve our $100,000. If you're wrong, you don't deserve to have that radio network. Amen because you end up getting people all stirred up and then they lose faith in Christianity and preachers and the Word of God and it does much more harm than good. So I'm still thinking about that. We don't have that hundred thousand dollars to offer yet but I think we could get it. Anyway, just a thought. You know, this is not the first time that uh, people have issued false alarms. Let me give you a few high points. I don't have enough time to cover all of the false prophets and prognosticators that have talked about uh, when the second coming is going to be. And many of them were well-meaning. I'm not judging them. Some of them sincerely misapplied verses in the Bible. It goes all the way back to the apostles. Did the apostles misunderstand Christ's first coming? They did. Did Jesus give them times about when he said that he was going to die? When Christ came the first time, how many were ready? They weren't. Even back in the days of Jesus, were there many who rose up saying they were Christ? It, you read about that in the book of Acts. Gamaliel said, oh, we've had others who have come before claiming that they were the Messiah. We know is uh, recently, in the last couple hundred years, I think we all know about William Miller, godly Christian man, well-intentioned, but he had a calculation wrong. He misunderstood something. He took the prophecies in the Bible that talked about the cleansing of the sanctuary. He assumed the earth was the sanctuary and that it was to be cleansed by fire at the second coming. He may have had the date right, but he had the event wrong. By the way, when Christ came the first time, the apostles, they were right about his being the Messiah. They were wrong about the nature of the event. They got his first coming and second coming mixed up. They thought he was going to come like a lion the first time. He came like a lamb the first time, a sacrifice. It really confused the disciples at first. William Miller said that the Lord was coming October 22, 1844. Had the great Advent movement. 
Just for the record, a lot of people confuse that with Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh-day Adventists did not exist at that point. Uh, they were not formed until 1863. Then you've got uh, Charles Taze Russell with the Jehovah Witnesses, and they've set several dates. They taught in 1914 it would be the year when the times of the Gentiles ended. They thought that was synonymous with the Second Coming. When it didn't happen, they said, well, Jesus did come, but it was a spiritual coming. That'll work once or twice. And then in 1975, they said the great battle of Armageddon would take place. Uh, of course it didn't, and they've downplayed that, and I don't know how they um, take care of that. Then they said when they reached 144,000 Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus would come. Well, they've surpassed that number. And so they've set several dates, and it didn't happen. Um, Chuck Smith, founder of Calvary Chapel, may be very sincere, but he was certain that the rapture would take place in 1981. Well, have you checked your calendar? It did not happen. And right along with him, Hal Lindsey wrote that best-selling book in the 1970s, The Late Great Planet Earth. Now in that book, they believe that Israel being reformed as a nation in 1948, by the way, I do think that is a tremendously significant event. But then they said a generation will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Bible generation, 40 years go from 1948 to 1988. That's when the Lord's going to come back after the seven years of tribulation. It means that our secret rapture has to take place. This is their chronology, eschatology. Secret rapture has to take place in 1981 for the Lord to come back in 1988. And they put that all in a book, best-selling book. Everybody got excited. None of it happened. Not 1981, not 1988. None of it happened. No retractions are printed. Keep selling books. Hal Lindsey still has a TV program where he explains prophecy. Then you've got another fellow whose name was Edgar C. Wisenant, a former NASA engineer. He sold 4.5 million copies of a book that's called 88 Reasons Why the Lord is Going to Come by 1988. And um, matter of fact, I've got just a few more details on that. The, this, uh, he was using, uh, he was very sin sincere evidently, he said, only if the Bible is wrong am I wrong, I would stake my life that the Lord is going to come on Rosh Hashanah, Jewish festival, 1988, and uh, he evidently got some of the evangelicals on board with him. They sent out uh, 30,000, 300,000 copies of their book for free to all the different pastors to get everyone ready. Trinity Broadcasting Network, which of course is still around today, they interrupted their programming, they accepted this, interviewed the author, and began to tell people how to get ready for the rapture, leave notes behind for your family so they'll know where you went. Next day, of course, after the Lord did not come, programming resumed as normal. I don't know that there was any retraction printed. And uh, Mr. Wisenant also predicted, he said, oh, there's a miscalculation. It's actually 1989. And then he printed another book. He said, no, no, it's 1993. And he said, no, it's 1994, 1995. Last one was 1997, but by that point, nobody was listening. <laughs> he had his 15 minutes of fame. Then there was a Korean group in South Korea. Mission for Coming Days predicted October 28, 1992 for the rapture. Hundreds of thousands of people gathered in their churches, they would given everything to these churches, great sacrifice, and when it didn't happen, there's a lot of outrage, and they were fearing riots in the street. Then in 1994, John Henkel, Church of Christ in L.A., he predicted June 9th, 1994. And um, then you've got Sir Isaac Newton. Now, he didn't exactly predict the date, but he said the Lord can't come any sooner than 2060. 